the storm. I don't like it. I would actually go as far to say it's a bit of a doonagle. To me, the storm serves three purposes. One, to annoy you, which is annoying. Two, to fish for stormfish, which is annoying. And three, to get a white colored light, which is annoying. But I am here to tell you that this boy holds so much untapped potential. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Now I'm sure the original intent of the storm was to have something interesting in the sky other than clouds. And it looked pretty damn cool in the E3 2017 trailer. I also ask you humans if you'd miss the storm if it were to be removed from the game. And with nearly 10,000 votes the outcome is pretty split. The top response being, there's nothing more epic than a galleon versus galleon in the middle of a storm. Sure, okay, okay you say that, but then Megan decides to join the fight, the skeleton ship spawns and who dish? Kraken. But for me, the storm definitely has its place in Sea of Thieves, but it is super unbalanced. Opinion. Risk slash reward is the name of the game here. The rewards of the storm, fish and the white light. The risks, chance of sinking, annoyance causing random holes in your boat, struck by lightning, renders the compass useless, can't leave your wheel, and of course, losing a battle because the wheel didn't turn in your favor, but it turned in the opponent's favor. I don't know about you, but that scale is not level at all. Which is why I try to avoid the storm at all times. It's simply not strategically responsible. Some of you might say, come on, it's a storm, it's supposed to be unpleasant. Rule of thumb, if you enter the storm, you're gonna have a bad time. Stare clear of that bad boy and you won't have a bad time. I know there's a storm tracker out there where you can track where the storm is heading. I'll pop a link in the description for that one if you're interested. But my point is that eventually you're gonna find yourself in that storm or the storm is gonna find you. And I want to try and balance it better or at least make players go ew the storm instead of ugh the storm that's a hard task but I be, let's see what we got also let's get a big shout out to flameheart for ruining my time lapse dick Step 1. The random turning of the wheel. When you're in a storm, your wheel turns in a random pattern. The closer you get to the center of the storm, the worse it gets. And imagine doing this when you're solo, which is why I said in my solo video, stay the hell away from this thing. Oh, and you're about 75% blind in the storm. You just want to sail from A to B and for some reason you come to the conclusion that through the storm is the most efficient way and you cannot go around it because you had to sell that crate of wood and a contract is about to expire. Imagine this, you're on the boat, you hear the creaking signifying that the water is getting pretty high down there. You go to fix it, you come back up and uh oh, all of a sudden you're heading in the wrong way. But you don't know that, you can't see sh and the compass doesn't work. Sure, you are on a sloop and you can take a quick gander at the map table to make sure you're going where you need to go. But we're trying to make leaving the wheel safe during the storm. And here's my idea. You can jam one or two planks to lock that wheel in place. On a sloop, this would hold for about 15 to 20 seconds until the storm rips the planks away, damaging your wheel in the process. This should be enough time to fix some holes and come back and remove the planks before it damages the wheel. On a brig and a galleon, the breaking points will probably come faster since no one should solo any of those ships. With this system, the reward is you go straight in the storm. The risk is that you might break your wheel in the storm. I like it. Step 2. Sailing Advantage I don't know about you, but when I think of a storm, I think of two things. Big waves and strong winds. Maybe it rains too. We got big waves, but the wind stays the same as on the open seas. Now imagine this. On the open seas, the wind is unpredictable, right? But around the storm, it is predictable. Check this out. There is always a stronger wind circling the storm. The closer you get to the center, the stronger the wind could get. Get too close to the center, and there is no wind at all. Oh, this is fun. Obviously, the direction of which the wind rotates has to change from time to time. It cannot be that at the bottom it always goes towards the west and at the top it always goes towards the east. Imagine yourself chasing those pretty reaper's emissaries and oh, look at that. Let me just use this storm to catch up to that bad boy. If this was implemented in some form into the game, I would change my ugh to a ugh. Now let's talk about the risk reward for this system. The reward, faster speed with your boat. The risk, 
Your mast is not made for such speeds and therefore your mast will start to take damage. So you gotta keep planking. Oh yeah, that's a good balance. The rate of damage I think should stay the same for each ship type as the amount of masts increase with the bigger ships. But the mast can only take damage if you got the storm floof. No storm floof equals no mast damage. Floof is what I call it when you get wind in the sails. Step 3. Megan and the Kraken should be banned from the storm. There is no reward for fighting neither of these in the storm. Just pain. Hey, man, just stay away from the storm. Just fuck that. Do you have some of your own ideas for the storm? Do you agree or disagree with what I said here? Maybe I even expand upon what I said here. Let me hear them in the comments. Thanks for watching Pixels and I will see you next time.